Hey everyone, and welcome to today's Gale Force Twins episode, where we are going to be talking about engine troubleshooting 101. So what are the things you can do before calling a mechanic? Now these are very basic, like Amanda said, 101 engine troubleshooting, but it will definitely help you out if you either can't start your boat from the dock, or maybe you're out fishing and your engine goes, or maybe you're on anchor, you had your engines off, and you turn them back on and you can't get them to start. That's what this video is gonna help you out with. My name is Emily, my name's Amanda, and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. First thing you want to do is check your kill switch. If you're at the dock, the engine won't start. You're trying to crank, it won't start. You're at the sandbar, had a great day, trying to start your engine, it won't start. Check your kill switch. It could have gotten bumped or moved or fiddled with or someone could have been playing with it and had no idea what, the, what it was and your engine will not start. Your kill switch is a great safety. It is attached to a lanyard and you're supposed to attach this to yourself when running a vessel. We've heard stories where somebody is not wearing their kill switch, they get ejected from the boat, and the boat just runs away from them or it runs in circles. It's a very dangerous situation. So you want this attached to yourself so that if something happens and you get pushed away from the wheel, you get ejected from the vessel, it'll come off. Your engines are going to stop. That's the alarm telling me that they are stopping. Is I'm going to put this back on. It is going to stop and it is for everybody's safety. So just first thing to do is check, make sure your kill switch is attached. The next thing to look for is check and make sure that your throttles are in neutral. It happens to the best of us. It has happened to me and my sister on more than one occasion. Go to start it, don't realize the throttles weren't in neutral. Maybe one of them was just slightly bumped out of gear. Maybe they both were so you couldn't tell whatever the situation check and make sure your throttles are in neutral because your engines will not start if they are not in neutral. It can happen once again. Someone might have bumped it when you weren't paying attention or maybe you even bumped it and didn't even realize. And like I said, it can even just be slightly outside of neutral and sometimes they won't start. Number three is going to be check your batteries. You want to make sure that your batteries are charged, they are working well, and there are a couple ways to check the status of your batteries. If your batteries are connected to your screens, for us as our SIMRADs, thankfully they can show us how many volts our batteries are putting off. Today we have 13 volts coming off, which tells us we have a full charge and the batteries are perfect. So if for some reason my engines wouldn't start, but my battery said 13 volts, I would know already it is not a battery issue. Anywhere in the 12 to 13 range for batteries is pretty much perfect. That's going to tell you that it's not a battery issue. But what happens if your screen does not connect? to your batteries, how do you know what the volts are? For one, you could get a voltmeter and check the volts, and the second thing you can do is we're gonna crawl into the bilge and check the batteries ourselves visually. When physically looking at your batteries, we are gonna want to check our terminals, make sure they are tight, all the, twist it all the way down and not corroded. So that's what you're gonna wanna do, come in, and you're gonna wanna make sure everything looks good physically to the eye, it, did something fall off, is something missing? So that's what we're looking at, we're not corroded, everything looks great down here, so that looks good. Another thing you can do if your engine won't start that is battery related is you can turn your emergency parallel knob. So what that's going to do is going to take the power of all of your batteries together to try to get those engines to start. On some boats, it's a separate knob here like this. And on some boats, it's going to be the same knob, but one more click. On this boat, it is a separate knob. I would just turn this to the right and that will combine the power of all of my batteries to try to get the engines to start. We've been over the kill switch, are the throttles in neutral, and the batteries. Now we're going to move on to the engines. And first and foremost, when it comes to engines, is do they have fuel? That might sound so self-explanatory, but it is important to check to make sure you have enough. Did you run out? A great rule of thumb is one third out, one third back, one third in reserve. For example, over time of going offshore, we know that we burn around 100 gallons in a day fishing offshore. So for me, that would be 50 gallons out, 50 gallons back, and 50 gallons in reserve. So I should not leave the dock if I don't have at least 150 gallons before I plan on going offshore. 
On the topic of fuel, let's say you did run your engines dry, and I will be the first to admit that I have done that. Thankfully, we have multiple fuel tanks on this boat. It was my fault. I should have checked. I thought there was enough fuel. The engines were running on the port and starboard tanks. Next thing I know, they start shaking, and I was like, this is not normal, and they go off just like that. There's no fuel in them now. I quickly ran, ch changed them over to run on the center tank. There was plenty of fuel, but at this point, because they had ran out, they were not going to start, and I had to prime the engines. Now, every boat is different when it comes to priming the engines in order to get them started when they run dry on fuel. Most boats are going to have a primer bulb that you will have to manually prime in order to get fuel from your fuel tank into your engine. Now, the newer boats, you have to prime them electronically. And when this first happened to me, we're used to the old fashioned way of getting down there, finding that bulb and priming it yourself. And I was like, I have no idea how to prime these electronically. I got on the phone with Invincible, they were very helpful. And it actually involves the key and a certain number of times you flip the key back and forth before you can start the engine and be on your way. Moral of the story, if you find that you need to prime your engines, you should know how to prime them before you find yourself in that situation. I found myself in that situation. Thankfully, it was a very, very calm day. There was hardly any wind. I had enough time to get them running again before I hit anything. Another thing you should be checking for is oil. Does your engine have enough oil? Now, with today's, our motors today, you don't even have to take the whole cowling off. A lot of the motors, you will have to take the whole cowling off. You'll get that off and check your oil. We'll go over how to check your oil really quickly. Start with a clean, dry rag or paper towel, but make sure it's clean. Whatever you use, make sure it's clean. You're going to pull your dipstick out the first time, wipe it off completely, put it back in, and then you pull it back out, then you're gonna see where that oil is and that's when you can read it. Now every engine is different, so do double check your engine for how to read the oil levels. This is our dipstick, and like I said, every boat's gonna be different. So you guys can see there's oil, in this region, which means that we're good to go. We have plenty of oil in this engine. The last thing we're going to go over is the intakes. Now the intake is the entrance to your cooling system on your engine. What it does is it pulls that cool water that's running in, whether it's salt water or fresh water, pulls it through the engine to cool it so that way it doesn't overheat. Now, if you get an overheating alarm, I'm going to bet that it's because your intakes are clogged. It could be from seaweed you ran through, it could be fishing line in there, whatever it is, it's probably clogged. So let's say you get an overheating alarm. If your engine doesn't turn off on its own, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is turn it off and trim it up and check your intakes. When you check your intakes, see if there's seagrass. It happens to us all the time. We have been offshore mahi fishing, going through piles and piles of seagrass when the weeds get really bad out there and get them in the intake. So what we have to do is shut it off, trim it up, get back there, pull the grass out, trim it back down, start it again, and we're good to go. So what does the intake look like? If you look down by the prop, you have those, basically there's like nine little holes by the prop. That is where the water is coming in. It pretty much looks the same on just about every vessel. It'll be a group of little holes over down in the lower unit by the prop. That's what you're looking to make sure is clear and clean. You see that small stream of water coming out of the engine? That is a good indicator that your intake is running through and through that water's coming in and exiting your engine. A fun little trick is if you can, sometimes you can catch it in time. If you go through some grass, you get the overheating alarm, bring the boat into neutral and then bump it in reverse. Sometimes bumping it in reverse will get any of that, that seaweed or seagrass that's back in there flushed out from behind the boat so that way it has clean water again. I definitely recommend that you get in the habit of every time you start your boat, you go back to the engines, take a look. Is water streaming out of it? Are the intakes clean? If they are, yes, great, you're good to go if they're running. But before you even start running, is the boat in neutral? Did you have your boat plugged in? Was the kill switch hit while you were gone? Do I have enough fuel? Like I said, one third out, one third back, one third reserve. If you guys have any questions, please post them in the comments. We're happy to answer them. That's Engine Troubleshooting 101. Maybe we'll have to come out with a 102. In the meantime, we hope you get out there, have fun, and stay safe.